So you're thinking about a career in finance, specifically the securities industry. If so, great job. There's a lot of opportunity in this space. In this video, we will discuss FINRA's Securities Industry Essentials Exam, otherwise known as the SIE exam, and specifically we'll talk about why you should consider taking it, what it is and why it's required for a lot of jobs in this industry, the official content outline and all the material that the exam will cover, some tips for studying, and how to pass on your first attempt. Passing the FINRA SIE exam is one of the best ways you can stand out from the crowd when you're applying for a role in the finance industry. Achieving success on this exam shows that you understand the concepts and terms that are crucial to the securities industry, and most importantly, that you can pass FINRA exams. The reality is FINRA licensing is tough, and employers have to let go of many good candidates that just can't pass these exams. So what exactly is FINRA and what is their SIE exam? FINRA, which stands for the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, is the primary self-regulatory organization in the United States that oversees the securities industry. In plain terms, their job is to make sure that the professionals in the industry are complying with the law and acting in good faith when they're dealing with their customers and investors. Part of this process is licensing all candidates. FINRA's SIE exam is the entry level test for the finance industry, and it covers all the fundamentals you'll need for your role in the industry, regardless of whatever specific field you plan to work in. Currently, you can sit for the exam in person or online, but the online component of the exam was introduced during the COVID-19 crisis, and that might change in the future. The exam will present you with 85 test questions, but 10 of those are what we call experimental questions, which won't be counted for or against you, and also you won't know which questions are which. So essentially, you will have 75 questions that will be graded at the end of the exam, and you have one hour and 45 minutes to make it through the total process. In terms of the pass rate, FINRA isn't terribly transparent when it comes to pass rates on the exam, but the last time that the organization talked about the exam, they discussed a 74% pass rate. Now, keep in mind, we don't know exactly how they're calculating that pass rate. Could that be 74% of the people who sit for the exam on the first try pass? Or could that be 74% of the people eventually pass, even if they have to sit for the exam three or four times? We don't exactly know, but the bottom line is that 74% of the people that take this exam seem to eventually pass it. Let's go ahead and jump to how FINRA structures this test. And in particular, they break down the SIE exam into four specific units. Let's go through all of them. The first unit is knowledge of capital markets, which represents 16% of the exam or 12 of the 75 questions that are graded at the end. This unit covers the structure, the laws, regulations, and the regulators of the securities markets. Test questions will cover everything from the SEC to FINRA and other regulatory organizations and how they regulate the markets. Different market participants and their role in the industry, which would include brokerage firms, investment advisors, market makers, traders, and investors. Different types of securities offerings are also covered in this unit, which would include things like initial public offerings of stock. And last, basic economic factors are also covered in this unit. And that would include things like, how does the Federal Reserve impact the economy? What are some basic components of the economy, like GDP and peaks and expansions and recessions, so forth? The second unit on the SI exam is understanding products and their risks, which represents 44% of the exam or 33 of the 75 tested questions. And this is the biggest unit on the test. Securities products are the focus of this unit. And you will need to know the benefits, the risks, and all the important characteristics of a number of different securities, including common stock, preferred stock, corporate bonds, U.S. government bonds, municipal bonds, mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, exchange-traded notes, options, direct participation programs like limited partnerships, and that's not even all of them. There are others on the outline that you might come across on the exam, but those tend to be the most heavily tested. The third unit, which is the second largest of the four, is understanding trading, 
customer accounts, and prohibited activities. It covers 31% of the exam or 23 of the 75 tested questions. Various account types are tested in this unit, including cash, margin, individual, joint, fiduciary, custodial, discretionary. Order types and strategies shows up in this unit as well, which would include market orders, limit orders, stop orders, stop limit orders, understanding terms like long, short, bullish, bearish. Investment returns are also covered, and that could be anything from dividends from stock to interest from bonds to capital gains on pretty much any type of security, and how to measure returns like total return, current yield, yield of maturity, and finally, you might actually need to think like a criminal in certain parts of this exam. So you'll need to understand what market manipulation is, what insider trading is, how investors are taken advantage of. And the point of understanding all those criminal and unethical actions in the industry is to make sure that you don't cross the line when you work there. The fourth and last unit, which is also the smallest unit of the four, is overview of regulatory framework. It represents 9% of the test or seven of the 75 tested questions. A lot of what you'll need to know in this unit actually will relate to the registration process once you get into the industry. So for example, you'll need to know what types of forms you'll need to submit to properly get registered, how do you maintain your license once you're in the industry through continuing education, what type of events you would need to report to not only your employer, but FINRA if they were to unfold, like if you have a job outside of your employing firm, or if you are arrested or convicted of a felony or misdemeanor while you're working in the industry, among other ethical rules and regulations like how much you can gift someone else in the industry or how much a customer can give you if they're really happy with your services. This is another unit that's really important so that you understand your ethical obligations while working in the industry. FINRA does break down their exam into those four specific units, but there's a lot of overlap between the units and the way that FINRA presents their outline is not exactly the best for understanding the material and it doesn't really flow very concisely. So what you'll find in most learning programs, including Achievable, is that the material is presented a little bit differently than the way it shows up in FINRA's outline. And from here, we will walk through Achievable's SIE program outline so that you understand the flow of information that you'll come across. Our first chapter covers common stock, by far the most popular security in the market. And if you've heard of stocks being discussed on the news, that is common stock. In this chapter, you'll learn about the basic characteristics of common stock, what are the rights of stockholders, how to analyze a stock and understand if it's a good or a bad investment, the different markets that investors trade these investments in, and finally, you'll learn about investments that aren't exactly common stock, but certainly related to common stock, like American Depository Receipts, Rights, and Warrants. The next chapter is preferred stock, which is pretty similar to common stock, although preferred stocks are primarily sought out by investors for their dividend income. You will learn about the characteristics, the benefits, the risks of these types of investments, and how the interest rate environment shapes the market for these types of securities. The next several chapters are bond focused. You may not have ever heard of a bond, but if you have, you probably know that it's very similar to a loan. Investors loan their money to organizations, and that could be anything from the US government to big corporations to state and local governments. And a bond represents a different way to make money on an investment. The first bond chapter is what we call bond fundamentals. And you'll learn everything from basic characteristics of these investments, par values, how they pay interest, what are the bonds that don't pay interest until maturity, what is maturity, and all the other random characteristics you might need to know for the exam. The next three chapters are specifically focused on types of bonds and debt securities out there. The first one being corporate debt securities, the second one being municipal, which are state and local government debt securities, and the third one is U.S. government debt securities. The U.S. government debt chapter will also cover fiscal and monetary policy, fiscal policy being our government's policy that influences the economy, and monetary policy, which is driven by the Federal Reserve and essentially controls the money supply. The next chapter is investment companies, which covers a number of different products, including mutual funds, closed-in funds, exchange-traded funds, exchange-traded notes, and unit investment trusts. 
you will need to understand the benefits, the risks, and the characteristics of all these investments. Alternative pooled investments is our next chapter, which covers similar products to investment companies, but they don't legally meet the definition of an investment company. You will find real estate investment trusts, hedge funds, and limited partnerships specifically covered in this chapter. The next chapter is options, which are derivative securities that essentially are bets on where market prices are going in the future. If you've ever heard of a call or a put, you probably know a little bit about how options work and options are used in a number of different ways by investors, whether it's to protect them from losses or to make a big bet on the stock prices going up or down, or even a big bet on where the market's going in the future. Next, we have the taxes chapter, which covers exactly what you might think it does. When you invest in the market, if you make money, you pay taxes. If you lose money, you sometimes get a tax write-off. And this chapter covers how the IRS specifically influences investors' returns. Next, we have the primary market chapter. The primary market is where securities are offered by issuers for the very first time. For example, Airbnb had their initial public offering in late 2020, and they sold billions of dollars of stock to investors to raise money for their operations. In that example, Airbnb is the issuer, they sold stock to investors, and this chapter covers how that process works. The next chapter is the secondary market. After securities are sold by issuers in the primary market, investors then trade them in the secondary market. And if you've ever heard of the stock or the bond markets, those are examples of secondary markets. Brokerage accounts is the following chapter, and this will include all the different accounts that investors open to invest in securities. You'll learn everything about different types of individual accounts, joint accounts, fiduciary accounts, trust accounts, discretionary accounts, cash accounts, margin accounts, and the rules and regulations that firms must abide by when offering these types of accounts to their customers. Next, retirement and education plans chapter. And this covers everything from different types of qualified plans like 401ks, 403bs, SEP IRAs, SIMP IRAs, to individual retirement plans like IRAs, Roth, and traditional. And you'll also learn about different types of educational plans like 529 tuition savings plans and Coverdell education savings accounts. And the very last chapter in the Achievable Program covers rules and ethics. These are the do's and don'ts in the securities industry. Here you'll learn about prohibited activities, market manipulation, how to properly take care of your customers, and what your ethical duties are while working in the industry. Now that we feel confident in what you'll encounter on the exam and the knowledge you'll gain in your learning programs, let's discuss best practices for passing the exam on the very first try. First, you must expect to do a good amount of work to pass this exam. Most test takers need a minimum of 20 to 30 hours of study time if not more, depending on how quick of a learner you are. The key to adequately preparing yourself is studying consistently and avoiding trying to cram for this exam over the course of a day or two. Now, most test takers can adequately prepare in say two weeks, maybe give or take a few days, especially if you're studying consistently, like you're studying for two to three hours a day over the course of two weeks or so. One of the reasons why it's very difficult, if not impossible to cram for this exam is the sheer number of test concepts you need to know, understand, and sometimes memorize to succeed. There are a number of formulas you might need to memorize, concepts that you'll need to know in and out, and also you'll need to go through a number of practice questions to make sure that you understand how questions on these topics can be presented. FINRA tends to write their questions in tricky and sometimes confusing ways, and test taking skills are very important to build while you're preparing for this exam. Ultimately, the best way to use your learning program is to read through your materials, consistently take quizzes after you go through chapters, rinse and repeat until you get to the end of the material, and then take enough practice exams to get to the point where you're consistently attaining passing scores or higher. And good news, 
If you're using Achievables Learning Program, our system will analyze your efforts, look at your exam scores, understand your strengths and weaknesses, and assign a readiness score from zero to 100. The closer to 100% you get, the more ready you are for the exam. Yes, I am biased because I'm the author of the Achievable SIE program, but it is a modern online learning program that uses technology to help you pass. Our customers regularly succeed on the exam and we post industry best pass rates. If you're interested, visit achievable.me to gain access to a free trial to see if our course is right for you.